Hey guys, it's Angus Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm super excited because I'm going to be bringing you a new video. This video is going to be on procedural generation. I actually spent all the day yesterday working on an L system which is going to allow us to create procedural trees. So I'm really excited about it. You can see on the video above that is playing right now, some of the different examples that I have. I have a script that is actually an editor that is gonna allow us to generate procedural trees. We can change parameters. I also have a randomizer that it's going to use those parameters and generate them in the fly and then apply them to the algorithm that I created. So let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. All right guys, so let me show you my project. And this project I worked on all day yesterday. I'm pretty excited about the results. I'm also going to start by showing you some of the scenes, how the editor tools work, and then we'll jump into the code and I will explain as much as I can how the code works. It took me some time to understand it and then you know I had to do a lot of review and trigonometry and I'm really happy with it. I think anybody can do it as long as you you know put your mind into it. So this is one of the trees that I that I generated and I actually posted in Twitter. So you can see that the L system total. And the way that this is composed is I have a line render. So this line render is the one that is generating, it's basically the template that I use for each line. So the way that it works is I use a line render for each, basically for each one of the three parts. So for instance, if I wanted to look at line zero and I go into line zero, this is actually just line zero. If I go to line one, it's gonna be line one and then, you know, and so on. And I keep building the tree, keep building the tree and then you can go so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep adding more functionality to this such as leaves that I want to add and then also right now this is only supported for X and Y so it's only 2D but I'm gonna be making it 3D in the next video so just keep in mind that that's gonna come for now this is gonna be you know very basic starting with what I have right now so let me go ahead and go back into and look at the entire tree which which I think it looks really really, really cool so that is basically one of the one of the components of the L system total. That's what I call the system that actually calls the L system generator. And if we go here and you look at the L system total, so this is a script that has basically the rules. So in an L system, you have to have so you have a starting sentence, and then based on that sentence, we we actually apply rules. So the sentence is is also called the axiom. And that action is the one that we're gonna we're gonna use to basically do a replacement on, on the rules. So the way that this works right now, like if I go and I could go into more in depth in this and I might do it in the next videos, but right now the sentence is F, and then the rules say, okay, every time I find X, I'm gonna replace it with this. So it works in also by the number of generations. So this might happen on the first generation, it finds F and it's gonna replace it with this. But then if I have multiple generations of that, imagine you know F being replaced by this, and then this other F by this, and then the plus symbol means that I'm gonna go, you know, this many, this much of an angle on the on basically I'm saying, okay, I'm gonna grab that angle and I'm gonna go in the positive positive direction. So I'm gonna say plus 30, and then this is gonna be plus 30. This is gonna be this one is gonna be negative 30. I just realized that the angle here doesn't really mo make much sense. The also the actual minus, because I could just you know calculate that based on the symbol. But that's how the way it actually works really well the way that I have it coded. And then you can also specify how long of a line we ha we need we we're gonna have, and then how many generations we have. So this one I have it set to be very you know very high. So if I if I hit to, if I hit play right now. You're gonna see what I what I generate. So generate that. So let's say that I wanted to go. Maybe I didn't want to have as much of that angle. Maybe I want to do about 20. So let's go ahead and do. Let me delete 30 and then do 20. And hit generate. And keep in mind that five generations is a lot of generations. And normally I would go lower. And I sh I'll show you. I'll show you that going lower in in the other scenes. I don't want to change this scene. And then let's do 30 and see that the the tree is gonna get much skinnier. And if I go and do maybe 70, and you can regenerate that. It's more, more of a wide, a wide three. Let's go ahead and do 50. And I'm gonna hit generate. And I like that look. So I'm just gonna hit play. Let's go ahead and look at another scene. So this is the scene that it's going to have most of the generations. 
and I could increment this. I just need a max of five. I think I think five is, is big enough. So that's this scene right here. So what if I wanted to do it manual? Let's say that we start with a very simple tree. So very simple tree is gonna be, you know, what I had before, but I'm going to do less generations. We probably wanna do, let's go ahead and do one generation and then keep the angle, maybe keep the angle at, let's do zero and see what we get. So I'm gonna hit play. And right now we just have just a simple, a simple little line, right? There's really no, nothing to it. So let's go, go ahead and add a lingle. I'm gonna do about 10. You can see we have a little bit of a branch. And yep, it's a little bit of a branch. And what if we add a little bit more of an angle? Let's do 35. Let's see how that changes. What if we wanna go negative? Ooh, man, that goes to the other way. What if I wanna go you know, less or we wanna go more? Let's see how that opens up. So that's basically what's happening. It's, it's basically recursively applying different the re different rule sets for each iteration that this goes through so if i wanted to go what if we want to go two generations there we go so we have two generations let's go ahead and make these let's go ahead and make it wider so that the branches you can see how and i told you this was 2d so that's why you don't see any depth so what if we wanted to go taller so we'll, we'll do maybe two and we'll go taller so now we have a tree that is much taller what do we want to do five can see that you know we have a much taller tree but what if i want to go you know higher iterations now we have much longer of a tree with a lot of iterations so if i want to increment the angle so i increment the angle let's go ahead and do 50. we have a really cool interesting tree maybe we'll do three here and then you see how it comes so so i think that's the magic of procedural generation is you start you know you start playing with the with these sliders and then until you get the looking look that you want and the other thing that came to mind though when i was working on this is well i do like that i can generate something and 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 i didn't have this working when i started i i only had the you know the generation happen when i hit play but i wanted to keep testing and i wanted to make these more dynamic so anytime you're working on procedural generation you want to try to make tools that are going to allow you to test different basically different test cases in this case i want to be able to test angles and then and then basically redraw everything and and change parameters and see how it's going to affect it because that's what's going to help me in testing things so i had a lot of bugs in the beginning and and just when i added these tools it allowed me to see oh i had the math run or i had the i had this other thing run so so make sure that you look at tools that you can build that it can help you in finding ways to implement what I call difficult features. And, and I call this difficult, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, now that I know about it, it's probably not that bad. When I started, I, I it, it was a little bit difficult. So so anyway, so now that I'm changing these, what if I what if I wanted to animate these, right? And that's a question that I had, and that's why I created it at a random. So if I go to L system at a random, this one and this one has four different uh, system totals. And the so I have the script that I have above it. And I also have something called a system total randomizer. And this randomizer, all, all this is doing is saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically tell the system that every two seconds, I'm going to be changing the angle. So I just pick one property and I and randomize that property. In this case, I say, okay, every two seconds, I'm going to randomize the minimum angle and the maximum angle from negative 55 to 55. And then every two seconds is going to change. So if we go ahead and hit play, I'm going to show you the results. You're going to see that they are going to start, you know, they're going to start changing and the little one is changing. And and I noticed that some cases I'm getting like very big gaps. And and the reason for that is because sometimes I'm getting like sometimes it looks like a straight line. And that's because I'm going from negative 55 to 55. I could add another property in there that would make sure that we don't go, you know, between 10 and maybe maybe negative five and five that way the the tree doesn't look as skinny but i think i think for now this is this is perfect so what if we wanted to do it faster right we want to do it every maybe every 0.5 seconds you can see how that is now changing very rapidly and and you know it depends on how much generations you have i set it to four because i didn't want the system to to basically slow down and in fact we could probably just bring in the stats here and see what we're getting. So, so it is, is it is hitting the computer pretty hard because we get we have way too many generations. So, if I wanted to go maybe every second, you're gonna see that the frames per second is gonna go up. And the reason for that is because I'm creating I'm creating thousands and thousands of lines, 
and then removing those lines, re-adding those lines. So I'm also going to be just adding, let's go ahead and do just one, right? One system. That way we can we can focus on this. So if we what if we do this and we set it to three generations? And now you can see it's much smaller three frames per second are okay. It's just when you start, you know, uh, doing more generations because every you know every point something milliseconds is gonna have to regenerate thousands. I think it was about thirty five thousand different lines. And there's probably ways to improve it, but that wasn't my goal for this video. My goal was to make this algorithm work and also make it you know available for the community. So that's how this works. The other thing that I can do here now that I have that I'm focused on this tree. Let's say that I wanted to go, maybe we wanted to go much, you know, much skinnier. Oh, we always want to go positive. Maybe we'll just do 30. Oh, we can do, well, actually, this one goes from a negative number, so we can do, it goes from zero to, I just realized I could change this and also allow this to go from a positive to a positive. That way we could always get, we could always get, in fact, let, let's just try that. I'm going to go into my L system total randomizer and this one is one of the components that I, the, you know, that I built for the randomizer. It requires the L system total that I show you, and I'm going to put this one right here, and which is going to be on the side. And I'm going to make this smaller. And I'm going to go very quickly through this, and then once I make the code open source, make sure that you check it out in Patreon.com because I'm going to basically offer there for you know early access for the first week, and then after that week it'll go. It'll go open source for everybody else. So the way that this works is I have a range. So I specify a range from 0 to 20. I didn't want to wait longer than 20, but if you want to increment that number, you can. That way, you know, if you want to wait longer than 20 seconds before the next generation, you can do that. This is the minimum angle. And, and like I said, I'm going from a negative number to, to, that, to a positive. So I could have done something like from negative 80 to 80. And I could have done the same thing here for negative 80. To 80, and then we have default values of negative 10 and 10, and then I have a timer because I need to keep track. You know, as soon as we reach the the mark that the user sets or the level designer sets, then we're going to be applying the regeneration again, and then resetting it. You know, when the when when we're done applying the generation, just like I show you here, and then I have a reference to the L system total because I need to regenerate everything. So. As you can see on the awake, I get a component, which is this component right here. And then oh, during the update, that's when I start incrementing the timer. I said, okay, if the randomizer timer hasn't hasn't hit the randomized seconds, then we increment the time. So I use time that delta time, I multiply it by one, and then that gets incremented. When we reach the max, I get the angle that the user set in here. I get a number between the minimum angle, the maximum angle. I apply the angle to the system total. And then I just regenerate, and then I have a basically a property here that specify if I need to re if I need to clean the the generation. This is because if I have if I already generated a tree, I want to make sure that I clean up all the game objects, and then I regenerate everything. So that's how this works. Let's go ahead and look at it from now that I make changes to be able to to use positive numbers on the minimum, and also negative number from the max. Now this should we should be able to do something like this. So if I want to do maybe 30 to 47, we can do that. Let's go ahead and look at look at this now. And now you can see that the tree is staying consistently between 37 and 47. I could probably just make it a small little changes. So there's no huge changes. You see how the tree is just, that actually gives it a really cool look actually. And we can do, do something like that. Just small little changes, just a little bit of a win. I think it makes it, it makes it look really cool, actually. Okay, so that's how this this scene works. Let me let me go ahead and hit play, and we can go into into the code. So I show you the randomizer. That's what it does. And then before we go into the code that is the most complex, we can go into the rules. So the rules is pretty simple. This just says, okay, if I have the character f. I'm going to replace it with the character f plus f. So very simple. I get, I find this character, I replace it with this character. I find this character, I replace it with this character. That's what this class does. It's just a, it's just a simple rule. One is a char, one, one is a string. So now if we go into the, into the state, I also needed to keep track of the state of the line. So this class allows me to do that. 
I can store what the size is, I store what the angle is, I also store the x and y value, and I, I have a clone method because when I put something in the stack, and I'm going to give you some references so that you can look at the implementation of the algorithm, the actual theory, before you, you get overwhelmed and you're like, Dylan, what are you talking about? Because I did get overwhelmed before I was actually looking at how to implement this. But anyways, this is actually going to allow us to clone uh, L system state so that we can put it into a stack into a zone object. And then I just have a two string here and overwrite. That way I know the values of all the different properties here. So that's that piece. And then if we go, so I show you the rule, I show you the state. Now let's go ahead and look at the at the L system. So this is one of the ones that does a lot of the work. This is the algorithm itself. So we store the, the sentence. I also store the original sentence. I do this because I need to make sure that if somebody resets it, it goes back to the original state. I also have a list with all the different rules that, I, that I'm going to allow because it's not only one rule, you can have many rules. I also store how many generations we allow. I have a public property that allows me to return the count. I have the same thing with the rule count. And then I have a public property that allows me to see the generated sentence because I didn't want people from the outside or other classes to be able to access the sentence directly. So that's what I have a property for this. And then this one is just so that I can save the original sentence before we generate the tree. I just check, okay, if this is null or empty. So this is the first time this gets wrong. It's going to be original sentence is going to be null and it's going to be, actually it's going to be empty. So I set the sentence that we, we set through the inspector to the original. I also do the same with the restore. So on restore, I just say, okay, give me the original sentence and set it to the sentence so that we can regenerate the tree. So now the, the generation is, is, is actually not complicated. It's pretty straightforward. I have a stream builder. It's called next gen. And then I have a for loop that goes through the sentence characters. So for instance, if the if we have something like f dash f dash f dash f, then what's going to happen, the sentence is going to be this this basically this string right here. And then the rules are going to say, okay, anytime I find the letter f, I'm going to replace it with this. So what's going to happen is, okay, I'm going to get the correct character here, which is going to be this one. We're going to say, okay, we're going to say that character to this string. And then I'm going to loop through the rules. So I'm going to say, okay, that's, that's the rule, which is this rule right here. Well, actually it's going to be this rule right here, which is, this is a rule character. Does that give me that, give me the rule character, which is going to be this one, right? And then I'm going to check, okay, is the group, is the rule character, does that equal to current, which is this? I'm going to say, oh yeah, it, it does equal to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the replacement value, which in this case is going to be this value. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to replace it with this. And then I'm going to do the same thing because if you look at it, this is the rule character. I'm going to say minus, minus. So the result of the, the result of this is going to be, okay, I found the letter F. So I'm going to put in F, right? I'm, I'm searching for F. As soon as I find it, I'm going to replace it with this. I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to, I'm going to do dash, dash. And then I'm going to search for that. And I'm, this is my rule. So I'm going to replace it with this. And then I'm going to do dash, dash. And I'm going to find that character. And I'm going to replace it with that and that. So this is going to be the final generated sentence that I have based on the rules that we set. So if I wanted to do something like another rule, so this is going to be, say, this is rule one, rule two. Let's say that I wanted to do something on rule two that was going to be G, right? If I fight G, I'm going to do maybe plus plus. And then, so the way this is going to work is I already apply, you know, in this string, I don't have that, right? But as soon as I generate the sentence and I go through another iteration, I'm going to, I'm going to notice that I have G in here. So I'm going to replace that with plus plus. Anyways, that, that's kind of how, how it works. And it took me some time to, to go through it. And actually what I'm going to do instead of deleting it all, I'm going to, I'm going to remove this rule and then we can just say example, example results. This is the results, and instead of using that character, the the dash and the plus symbol there is to de designate that a character that this means this. So whenever I find this character, I'm gonna replace it with this. So let me go ahead and do that. And okay, excellent. And then I have single quotes on the ones above it. I'll just it doesn't really it's it's not really needed. I think I just added it just for for my sanity. 
anyway, so so that's how this works. As soon as I find a character, I replace it with the character in the replacement, and then and then I break, and then I keep going through the loop until I'm done checking for all the characters, and then I add it for each iteration. I add it to the stream builder, and then when we're done, I generate the sentence, and then we increment the generation. So that is the algorithm for creating an L system. This is you know this one is the basic part. The part that took me the longest was the actual system that generates the drawing within Unity. So I'm going to show you that. So I have a L system, which is the script that I just showed you. I have the length of the line. I also have an angle, the number of generations. I also have a line render because I use this one as a template. This is not the one that I use to draw. This is the one that I use to basically as a template for the other ones that I, that I draw with. I also keep track of each line that I'm drawing. Then I don't think I'm using this was these were two properties that I was using in the very beginning and I changed the way that I implemented the algorithm. And then I also have a L system state. This is so that I can save the state of the, you know, where the curve where, where the point is in within the within the curve. Because I'm going up, right? So I need to keep track of where I am. So this allows me to keep track of that. Also the angles where I am in an angle. And then I also have a stack. The reason for a stack is because I, I also introduced something called, it basically allows me to, to do something like this within the rules. And what that allows me to do is basically to go back into a specific position. So if I do something like this, for instance, if I do a F plus F, and then I do F, 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 and then I do F plus F. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna draw F I'm gonna I'm gonna change the plus symbol is gonna be rotating in an angle on a on a on a positive direction. I'm gonna draw another line. I'm gonna save the position of, of basically where I am right now. I'm gonna draw draw draw, and then I'm gonna come back to this position right here. So the the beginning saves the position. The ending one it basically pops that last position so that I can come back in here. And this is helpful because when I, when you're doing branches in a tree, you need to basically draw a branch and then come back and then draw another branch. So that's what that is. And and, and I promise that I'm going to do a better video about explaining that and maybe do it on the board so that I can give you a better understanding of how that works. But anyways, you can look at the code as well. And then I just keep track of all the lines because I want to make sure that I'm cleaning things up. Then on the awake method, I call generate. This is, this is why I added this basically this, this parameter here as default. So if I don't specify, I don't have to clean anything. If I specify as true, I have to clean up the system. So in the awake method, I know I don't have a system generated, so that's why I don't have to clean anything. So I just check, I just check, do I need to clean anything? No, I don't need to clean anything. So then I check, is the cell system, is the L system null? If it is null, I just basically warn the user, give him an error, and then disable the script. If I don't have any counts, I do the same thing because we wanna make sure that we have rules, otherwise we can't really do anything. Then I get my template, the L renderer template, and I should probably rename that variable, but that's what that is. And then I initialize it to a position count of two. I don't know why I did that, but I wanted to make sure that I could see a dot where the where basically where the system was going to be drawn from. And I think that's what I did that. And then I loop through each iteration. So I specify how many iterations I'm going to go through. And, and this one is going to is going to start at one. I also have a max of five, a minimum of one. So then I go through here and I push the safe state into the stack. I clone it and then I call my L system that generate, which I which I show you already, which is going to be you know generating most of the most of the alphabet replacements. And then I pop the state as soon as I as soon as I'm done with the generation. I push it, I popped it, I, I push it, I popped it, and then I draw my line. So my draw lines is the one that, that took me most of the time and and this one was based on one of, and I'm going to put a reference to his video. It's a video that I watch on L Systems in YouTube. The guy is pretty helpful, so I'm going to put him as a reference because I think he deserves the credits. And anyway, so I initialize the state to x0, y0, size, length, and then the angle. And then I get the generated sentence. And then I loop through the sentence, basically through the sentence length in every character. So I say, okay, give me the character on the first, basically give me the first character, store it as a chart, and then go into my switch statement. So if I if I find the character F, I know I need to draw a line. If I find the character G, I know that I just need to translate. So this means that I'm gonna move 
but I'm not gonna draw any line. This means that I'm gonna move and I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna draw a line, I'm actually gonna move. So that means if you're going up and I draw a line, I'm gonna, basically I'm gonna leave my position at that point. If I just do translate, it's just gonna move up, but I'm not gonna draw anything, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna change the position to be at the top of that line. So the plus symbol just increments the angle based on the angle property that I said right above it. And then this just decrement, decrements the angle. The bracket, like I show you, it pushes the stay, the stay into the stack, and this one pops the stake into a stack. So let's go ahead and look at the line, at the line implementation. So this doesn't look like much, but it took me a while to figure it out. So the first thing that I do is I create a, a game object of type line. I save the, the current line. So right now it's set to zero. We haven't drawn anything. I also change the position and I make this new game object to be basically a parent of a child of this object right here, which is the L system turtle. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I add that line to my list. Then I create a new line render. I call setup line. So setup line just has some properties that I like. So just create a creates a new line render. It uses world space, the position count, default. I have a tag because I need to when I clear when I clean them up, I look for everything by a tag. And then I have some materials and then num number of vertices, actually number of cap vertices that I use. Uh, that way I can have rounded corners. So let's go back into where where I was. Let me just go ahead and search for these again. There we go. And then I just change. I just set the, the default position. I set my new ve vector equal to a state that x, and then transform that position that x. This is because if I have two trees, let's say that I go back to my let's go back into Unity so I can show you. So when I when I implemented this at first, I didn't have this part right. So what what, what was happening? is I couldn't offset, I could have multiple trees. So in this case, I have multiple trees. So I, have, I want each tree to draw independently of each other based on the position of this. So if I hit, if I hit play, you're gonna see that each of them have, you know, their own trees, right? Their own position. If you don't do that, every everything is gonna overlap to the origin, which is gonna be the origin of where I start drawing. So that's why I'm basically grabbing the transform position of this L system that total, and then I'm summing that and that's going to be my offset. And then I do a stay that Y. I also get the, you know, the transform position because if I want to, if I want to move some of the trees up, I want everything to move up in, in that tree. And then I, this is only X and basically X and Y. I don't support, I don't support the Z axis just yet, but I will in a future video. So that's this piece. And then let's look at, let's look at something else that I wanted to, so right now this looks great, right? But I wanted to, I did some math as well to make sure that I calculated everything correctly. So let me, let me look at these check, check angles. So in this one, I'm setting the position like I show you, and then I check all the angles. And so I, I wanted to make sure that the stay the angle was not, e was not equal to zero. So this means if I do have an angle, let's say that I have an angle of, you know, 30 degrees that we need to go, on the on the positive direction, then I need to make sure that I'm that I'm basically changing the value of x and the ch and the value of y correctly. So what I'm doing is I'm using math that scene. I get the angle. I divide it by I divide it by 100 and then I convert it to a flow and then I I, I basically sum that value at the increment to x and then I do the same thing with y except I'm I'm using cosine to get the value of y. If I don't have an angle then I know that I can just use the value of y and then I sum the size, the value of the size. So this part took me a little bit. I didn't hit, I didn't get the angles right at the beginning, but then, you know, I troubleshoot it and then I was able to, to make it work. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you today and some of the other things that I want to do later on. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and show you that is actually change the color of the line render. So right now i don't there's not a lot of details just white but one of the things that i could do as well is generate maybe generate different colors or different textures so that the trees look more realistic so and the other thing that i want to show you as well if i change the line render which is the template everything is going to use that as a template so you can see that the tree that i just generated use that as a template and then all the lines now have that style and i could do so i could do that that way i can also change the material if I wanted to on this line render. And it's going to change the material that I use, basically that gets used for every other for every other branch that, that gets generated for the tree. So 
that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about the L system that I just built and I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.